In this video we're going to look at the banking steps in REI Master. If we go to the main screen and to the banking tab at the top there, we've got a little screen that pops up and you'll see there there's a little wizard that you go through to finalise your banking to acknowledge the receipt of credit card and cash monies being physically banked at a branch or being deposited by your bank overnight. So the first step there is to perform a backup. Go through these steps here. Start your backup and let that run through. In step two, we then select the type of receipts that we're going to bank. So our options are to view cash and check receipts. We've got a couple there. To view credit card receipts or to view cash checks and credit card receipts. What I suggest is that you bank your cash and card ones separately because they're never going to appear as one transaction on your statement. So we'll look at the cash ones to start with. We've got three cash receipts there. To bank these ones we can individually tick them or we can click select all and in doing so we can see there's a cash a total there and then a total in that information there. In step three we should check that the bank is balanced or the reconciliation screen is balanced and by clicking there it opens up the reconciliation screen and we're sure we're in a balanced position. Step four is to finalise the deposit and we'll acknowledge then the, the date that we actually physically bank the cash monies there. So it shows as the current date there. You can of course use the calendar there to change the date of when you physically go to the branch and deposit this cash. In acknowledging the date there, you click on finalise. Confirm then that it will close off the banking for the cash there of that amount and we can click yes to continue. We can then print out our reports. We'll tick both of those and we'll have a look at them. So the first report there is a deposit slip which you're able to print out and take down to the branch there and it will acknowledge of course cash being deposited into your trust account. So print a copy of that one, print a second copy if you want to keep one with your banking records for the day. The second report here is an acknowledgement of the receipts banked as of the date that you acknowledge there. So we now can see the three cash receipts for the amounts there and again that will form part of your banking records for the day. So we've completed the banking of the cash monies there and if we close out of the banking screen, we go into the reconciliation screen, we've now got a deposit here. And if I click on to highlight it, we can also then see at the bottom of the screen the receipts that make up that banking amount or that total uh, banking record. Let's have a look at the credit card monies now. So again under banking, back into our banking wizard here, perform your backup in step one. In step two, select card receipts. We've got a list of them there. Again, you can tick them individually or you can select all. In step three, make sure you're in a balance position. Again, we're just confirming the balance position there. In step four, select the deposit date, i.e. the bank will process your credit card uh, receipts overnight. Finalize that there and again, confirm the amount to be banked and say yes to continue. And with these ones here we can print a copy of the receipt register. We don't need a bank deposit slip for credit card monies. Again if we select the print all on that one it gives you a list there of the individual receipts that make up the banking record that you're about to complete. So we close out of there. We go into the reconciliation screen and again we've got an FPOS now banking record showing there and again at below it will give you an indication here of the receipts that make up that total record. Now we'll just go through and look at a couple of options that you have available in the banking screen in here. 
In looking at the receipts at the bottom here, we can see the first one there shows receipt number 822 and a second line of receipt 822 as well. So it's only the first line that will show the description or the name of the guest there. Again, if we scroll down a little bit further here, we can see the same thing, receipt number 833, two lines of that one there. Only the surname of the guest will show in the description field there. Other options that are available to you in the banking screen here are the ability to separate a receipt from a banking record or move a receipt to a different banking record. So let's have a look at that here. I'll scroll down here. I'm going to remove this particular receipt from this banking record here. And I can do that by highlighting the banking record so that I can see the receipts, then highlighting the receipt that I want to uh, separate. If I right click, I have the op opportunity here to separate the receipt from the deposit. And if I select that there, just read through the information. What it will do is it will remove this receipt from the banking record that it's created and create a new banking record for it. If I click yes to that one there, you can see now I've got my original banking record here. No longer do I have that receipt in there, but I've got a second uh, transaction line here or banking record now with that receipt showing in there. What you should look at doing then if you are going to separate receipts because the information is incorrect is now print copies of the receipt registers for each of those banking records because the amounts are different as are the receipts that make up that record. So to do that you right highlight and then right click and you have the option here to reprint a receipt register. Again in there that receipt bank there shows for that receipt for the total there. If I highlight right click reprint a receipt register for the original banking record. Again this one is slightly different we no longer have 834 receipts showing in there and our, of course our total uh, is different there as well. As well as separating a receipt from a banking record we can also move receipts between banking records. So again if we just came, uh, look at this one here I just scroll to the bottom on these ones here. Let's just assume that these two angel receipts should be actually part of that other banking record there. So if I wanted to move them from this banking record into the second one, again I highlight that receipt in the bottom part of the screen, right click and select move a receipt to another deposit. Now I can only move a receipt to another banking record when those banking records are unreconciled or uncleared. So in selecting this one here, I'm going to move it and identify that it's this banking record I want to put that one into. And by doing so and then selecting the reassign option here, it will ask me do I want to move that receipt into the other deposit record. I do that there. Again, our um, amount is reduced on the original one here and increased on the second one. And I can see that that receipt is now part of that banking record. So let's just do that again, highlight the first one, I'll move this other angel one from here, so highlight, right click, select move receipt to another deposit, and again select the deposit record that you wish to move it to. Click on the reassign, and again our amounts have reduced here and increased here. And again as we looked at previously, we should look at highlight and reprint the receipt register for each one of those banking records that we've created. So in this video we've looked at the banking steps in REI Master. We've looked at banking cash and credit card monies separately. We've then looked at the banking records that are created in the bank reconciliation screen and how we can separate a receipt from a banking record or move receipts between banking records.